Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. Welcome to Rack of the Week number four. This week I'm playing on a diamond table again. This one's got four inch pockets. Pretty tough table, but I like playing on it. I'm sorry about the camera angle. There's no place to mount the camera on the other end of the table, but the next time I record on this table, I'll rack the balls on the other end. This week the rack uh, theme is connecting your shots, and it's about playing for options and connecting those options together to make your run simple. And also the break shot that begins this rack and the next rack are both inside angle, uh, what I call back cut break shots. So we'll talk about those a little bit. Let's get into the rack. Here's the last two balls of the previous rack. Obviously the six ball is my break ball and the seven has to be the key. The, since the six ball is so far from the rack, I know that I'm going to have a, a back cut break shot or an inside angle. And so I play to get an angle on the seven so I can go two rails and I'm going to use a heck of a lot of left hand spin. I just want to miss that six ball and hit the rail and come off the rail. Then I'll be able to comfortably cue the ball for this break shot. What makes this an inside angle break shot is if you imagine a line that's parallel to the rail through the six ball, the cue ball is between that line and the rail. So it's inside of that line. If the cue ball is on that line or to the right of it, it's not going to hit the rack with nearly as much force. And that's why when the ball is so far from the rack, you're better off with a back cut angle like I have here. Straight pool players need to be real confident in their back cut break shots. And I talk about them in my book and how to practice them. More on that later. Nice thing about back cut angles like this is you don't need to do much with the cue ball. You could use some outside English if you want, but mainly you're focusing on center pocket. Aim above center on the cue ball and put a nice smooth firm stroke on it. You can see there how much energy the cue ball had. Let's take a look at this break shot in slow motion. There's a couple things to notice. First, see how the cue ball hits the 11 ball full and bounces back off from the 11 ball. The 11 ball bounces back with it and then the high English on the cue ball takes and it curves around the rack. This break shot is among the least likely to scratch and the most likely to open the rack well, which makes it uh, a really powerful tool in your arsenal, but you've got to practice that back cut angle. So the balls open really well. I've even got two balls up table, although there are five balls in the rack area. I decide what to do fairly quickly. The very first thing that I notice is the 12 ball is the best break ball for the next rack. And I think a lot of players might choose to open that cluster in the center of the table by shooting the nine ball and getting an angle on the three to follow forward and open that cluster and then proceed from there. And I wouldn't fault any straight pool player for doing that. But I've kind of, I'm kind of in a rhythm and in a flow, and I notice that the two ball will also work as a break ball. So I quickly decide that I'm going to use that 12 ball right now to open the cluster. Doing so might develop a better break ball. I've got insurance balls everywhere. I also notice that I've got a three ball end pattern in the five, eight, one to get me on the two ball break shot. The five ball has a massive position zone where I'll be able to maneuver the cue ball and get a nice angle on the eight to float down to get straight in on the one. And none of those balls are gonna get disturbed when I open up this cluster right now. That worked out really well, although I have to admit, I don't have a shot on a single one of those insurance balls. And the reason is I was planning on drawing the cue ball back off from the cluster, and I didn't do that. It's really important to notice things like that while you're shooting. Even though this run continues, that could have been the end of the run if I didn't get a shot there if it wasn't for that 10 ball. So this situation is ideal. There are no trouble balls. The rack has been solved. It's wide open. All I need to do is not miss. And the definition of not missing is play good position. That means to give myself options so I'll never have a tough shot. We've already determined that the two, one, eight, and five are gonna be the last four balls. The remaining balls I see is three different groups. There's the three balls on the bottom rail. There's the three balls near the rack area, which are a shooting gallery. They can go in the lower left corner pocket or the right side pocket. And then the three balls in the center table, of which the 13 in the side is a great ball to set me up for the 11. And then possibly I use the 11 to get on the 9 to get on the 5. 
I want to eliminate the three balls on the bottom rail first. Obviously, my first shot is the 10 ball, and I'm going to try and hit it real softly so I can shoot one of those other two first. But if the cue ball comes a little bit too far, I know I have the 3 or the 15 into the side pocket. I'm playing position for more than one ball at a time. I know I have options, so I'm keeping the cue ball in a location on the table that keeps my options open. I get a good angle on the 4, so now I can move the cue ball below the 14, between the 14 and the rail. That'll let me move the cue ball back up table. Unfortunately, I shoot a little fast and I almost scratch, which is not good. So because I'm shooting a more difficult shot here, I'm just stunning the cue ball up a little bit so that I can get a shot on the 13 ball next. Look what happens. I'm straight in on the 7 ball on the side. When you have options, you want to keep your eyes open. Don't get locked into a pattern. I, I gave up on the 13 in the side immediately because that 7 easily led me to the 3. Now from the 3, I can slide past the 15, and I'll have a shot either on the 15 in the right-hand corner, the 9 in the side, or the 13 in the other side. Again, minimal cue ball movement and playing for multiple balls at one time. So I don't like the angle on the 15 or the 9, so let's shoot the 13 in the side. Make sure that you don't get straight in on the 11. You want an angle that lets you move the cue ball. So now I see that the 11 ball easily leads to the 15, which then easily leads to the 9. No matter what angle I got on the 15, I got straight in, but if I had a slight cut, I could roll forward and shoot the 9 ball in the other side pocket. As it is, it's a very simple shot, minimal cue ball movement again, to get on the 9, to get on the 5. And I cleared this table in, I think, in a, just over a minute. That's because all the balls were wide open, and I had lots of options. I had minimal cue ball movement while keeping my options open. Here we are in the end pattern already. I'm aiming for the third diamond, the diamond just above the side pocket. And if the cue ball just bounces off that rail just a little bit, I'll have an ideal angle on the one. As it is, it came way too far. So rather than drawing the ball back, I'm going to use a drag spin shot. I'm just spinning this ball in for the purpose of holding the cue ball for the back cut angle on my break shot. So I would have preferred the cue ball to be a foot closer to the camera, closer to the side pocket, so I had a less of a sharp angle but still an inside angle. As it is, this is a really powerful break shot. There's a section in my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool, that discusses back cut shots and especially back cut break shots. And I talk about how to measure them, how to determine just when you want to shoot them and when you don't, and how to practice them. And I've got a video uh, demonstrating a practice drill for back cut shots, as well as another video showing oh, six or seven or eight back cut break shots that I've made during various uh, straight pool runs. And if you practice this shot, it's a high percentage shot. The cue ball is close to the object ball. The object ball is close to the pocket. So I'm going to make this ball. I have full confidence, confidence in making this ball. And just like the six ball break shot that opened this rack, it's just slightly above center ball hit. Aim for center pocket and a nice firm stroke. And look how, ball, look how well the balls open on a back cut angle break shot. My book comes with a USB drive that's got over 200 videos demonstrating break shots and drills and a whole lot more. So check it out at shortstoponpool.com. I hope you found this Rack of the Week interesting and informative. Remember to keep your options open and don't have tunnel vision so you always see the best shot to keep your run going. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Rack of the Week.